Hello, we're live. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm DJ and we're here on a Wednesday. Not only a Wednesday, but a Wednesday afternoon as well, which is very weird. I'm not a I'm not an afternoon person, I'm a morning person. So uh, you have to bear with me, I'm afraid. I, I apologize, I apologize in advance for any extra um, brain delays I'll have today, um, but we'll give it a go. Um, so thank you very much for joining. I can see some uh, some of the usual suspects. Uh, I can see Napit and Pierre and Fre uh, was that Fred? You're interrupting your Open SAP Node.js deep dive. Uh, that's lovely. Thank you for joining us, Fred. And uh, who else can I see there? Oh, in fact, I can just go to my. Um, there we go. Who else can we see? Uh, Ptick four K A. Thanks for the wave, Bumblebee twenty four AC. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. And did I also spot um, Vitali somewhere? Um, and Srikanth is here as well. That's great. I mean, so there was a question. Uh, yes, the Musketeers, exactly. Uh, who's that face? There was that face. Uh, the Musketeers. So um, to answer your question, Pierre, um, which was, are we streaming on Wednesdays as well? Yes, we are, but only occasionally. Um, we had a chat last week uh, on the Friday. So Fridays will remain the regular weekly slot at the same time as it always is, which is 8 a.m. my time and 9 a.m. Uh, sort of Western Europe time and so on and so forth. Um, but we're doing this occasional extra midweek session. I'm calling it midweek because I may want to change it to Tuesday or Wednesday uh, or Thursday, for example, and it's occasional as well, um, to fit in extra topics, uh, but also to be able to reach um, the US audience, if there are anybody, is, if there's anybody in the US who may want to join now or in the future. Uh, right now on the Friday slot, it's a little bit difficult for them because, you know, we can't reach all the time zones all around the world. Um, so that's what this is for. Uh, and it also allows us to go maybe a little bit deeper and or a little bit slower, uh, more carefully through some of the subjects. So that's why we're here. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to um, uh, switch to the the main um, the main scene on OBS and switch back to the chat. Um, we yeah, we've got quite a few people on, um, uh, so that's good. This is a little bit of a random one, um, partly because it was something I'm curious about, or it is something I'm curious about. I don't know much about, and I'm picking up that you're curious about this as well. And that is the CDS REPL, uh, at which we'll sort of think about in a second, and also some debugging with uh, some v using some VS Code features and some configuration I've managed to find or um, uh, borrow off uh, some colleagues uh, to share with you. So, in fact, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, you can see my screen. And Marius, oh, oh there we go. Um, uh, uh, where are we? Where are we, Marius? Oh, but there we go. So, um, in fact, Marius Obert, a colleague of mine, um, wrote a blog post earlier this month on uh, upgrading Cloud Foundry with a new REPL feature. He talks about REPLs and he also wrote a really nice blog post on uh, Medium about REPLs as well. And one of the things he said was um, a REPL makes your application runtime more tangible. And I think we'll see that today. Oh, hi, Marius, you're there. <laughs> Excellent, welcome, Marius. Um, uh, one of the things he said, one of the things Marius said, you said, so ask, ask Marius questions, um, is that it makes your application runtime more tangible. And I said to Marius at the time, uh, that's such a wonderful way of saying it. Uh, I'm a big fan of REPLs, uh, and I'm sure many of you are, if you've dabbled in um, programming, language like, programming languages like Clojure, um, or even Perl, Python, Ruby, there's a sort of a, an interactive shell. Uh, and it allows you to sort of get closer to... Um, uh, the underlying mechanisms with which you're normally just programming, you know, with uh, with long sticks. Um, yeah, and as Mario says here as well, it allows you to interview your applications or services. So we're going to use the REPL to interview some stuff that's going on underneath within the um, CDS mechanism of our bookshop service. So that's what we're going to do. 
Um, REPL stands for, and I think we covered this very briefly on Friday when Christian was on the uh, stream. REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, uh, Print, Loop, which means it reads input from you, it evaluates it, and uh, you know prints uh, prints the output, and then loops around back to the top again. Uh, it comes, I think, uh, for, well, it's it's a it's a long, um, it's a very old concept uh, from maybe the seventies, maybe certainly the eighties. I think maybe the seventies with the uh, uh, structured interpretation of computer programs. Uh, SICP, the SICP course, a very very famous SICP course on Lisp. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, I'm going to close that. In fact, I might keep, no, I'll, cl I'll close that for now and open up a little terminal um, because, let's make that full screen and a little bit bigger. Um, we've got the bookshop app and I know that we're building slowly but surely. Uh, let's just bring, in fact, let's bring up another tab just for context. Oops, node.js. It's this one. The, uh, the tutorial on developers.sap.com that we've been following uh, is this one. And we're following this through and basically we build a bookshop. Uh, so what I've got uh, from last time is, where are we? Uh, live stream cap M. We've got this my bookshop, which is you know our sort of uh, in-flight um, uh, version following the tutorial, but I've also got a slightly more complete version, not with everything, um, in another copy called Bookshop, which I've just sort of deliberately uh, kept separate so we can continue on the next live stream on Friday with where we left off on the tutorial. And um, so in Bookshop here, um, let's go into there. And in fact, let's, why don't we just open up um, VS, Code, <coughs> VS Code and have a look around. Um, what we've got is nothing unexpected. So we've got the CSV files here that we use to populate the authors and uh, books. We've got our data model, which shouldn't uh, surprise us at all. Uh, we've got our service definition, and uh, that's pretty much it. We've, we've, I've already deployed it to SQLite. So if we open up the database in Database Explorer, that's where it is. Um, Let's move that up there for a second. Uh, we can see, for example, that uh, we've got authors, books, and orders. Uh, so there we go, authors, show table, and there it is. Okay, so we've got that. Um, but what we want to do is dig in a little bit to uh, the REPL, of course. So I'll close that. Um, if we do CDS, we get a little help, okay? So CDS uh, compile is the default command. Um, I've been looking around, of course, and I found this this whole idea of uh, REPL. So let's do a CDS help REPL, because we can get, get a little bit of help on each of the commands. So let's just do that. And the synopsis is it launches, it launches into a read evaluate print loop, an interactive playground, yes. Um, and see the documentation of Node.js's REPL for details. Now, this was really interesting because I thought, well, why is it pointing me to documentation there? It's because, well, let's have a look at this anyway. Let's open up this. Let's bring that across here. Um, essentially, Node.js has a REPL. What we're doing here is Node.js flavor of uh, the application programming model and effectively the CDS REPL is just a node REPL with extra magic. Um, if we have a look, in fact, so uh, if you have not played with a node REPL, we'll play with that very briefly, but this is the node REPL API documentation. Uh, if we go straight down to the node REPL, uh, node, node JS REPL, it says node JS itself uses the REPL module. So, you know, everything's modules in uh, it's modules all the way down in uh, in Node, and um, if we uh, if we start, let's just do that. If we start Node, we get a little prompt, um, and that is Node JS using the REPL module, as it says here, to provide this, this interactive shell. So we can say uh, you know uh, a equals one, uh, a plus one equal is three, uh, a, a plus two equals three. So. It's a way of interacting with 
the node environment and you can load um, you can load modules you can do all sorts of things interestingly down here um, one of the nice things is if I, if I uh, exit with control D oh I forgot uh, Srikanth I forgot to turn on my uh, key caster uh, there we go um, if we exit with control D and go back in again um, if I do an up arrow we get the last command now that's because of the node REPL history okay so I did a little bit of bit of um, digging here uh, vi home node REPL history and there it is and we can see that uh, last command, those last two commands, are there. Okay, so we've got we've got a history. So it's it's a fairly comfortable environment. Unfortunately, it uses sort of Emacs key bindings rather than Vim key bindings uh, for the editing, you know, up arrow and so on. But it doesn't really matter. So um, that's that. In fact, to to confirm what we see here, I'm just going to close that, make this full screen again, and I'm going to look inside. Um, the SAP CDS module, of course, which has been installed already when we did the uh, CDS uh, install, uh, sorry, NPM install for this project. So here's our node modules. There's the at SAP one, that's SAP CDS. I'm just using Ranger here to sort of look through uh, files. It's a lot better than anything that uh, Mac OS itself can do. Um, and I'm gonna look into the uh, bin directory. And as you can see in the bin directory, we've got the CDS command itself and you can sort of see the relationship between what we see on the screen when we invoke CDS and the different uh, shortcuts and the different options. And then also um, we can see that for, e for each of these or mostly for each of these, we've got an individual um, runtime, REPL.js for example. So we can have a look at that. Um, and we can see that uh, really, where is it? Where was it? Did I see it? Uh, uh, ba -da -da -ba -da. There we go. Const REPL equals require REPL dot start. So effectively, what we're using when we, well, we haven't used it yet, but when we, when we use the CDS REPL, we're actually just invoke, getting it to invoke a node REPL with extra magic. Okay, that extra magic you can see here um, in this. So there's nothing sort of hidden. Um, if you have time and a coffee and the inclination, you can go and dig into this, this source code and everything. I've been, I've been doing that a little bit. It's extremely um, interesting and educational. You know, I, there's, and also that the folks that write this, they write in a certain style, which I absolutely love. You know, I just love this sort of um, thing here where we've got, you know, well, um, is, there a, is, is colors any, any sort of value? Well, if it is, then require this. Otherwise, what the heck is that? Well, otherwise, this is the function to output something output whatever you get s gives s really beautiful i think anyway that's uh, that's a bit of a digression um so let's uh, come out of there and let's start up the cds REPL. i just i don't know why i don't know about you but um i love a sort of really simple command line with a nice sort of uh, nice sort of simple prompt um so there's some documentation so why don't we start with the documentation let me open up a new tab in the um, browser here. Let, again, let's go across here. Browsers here. Um, I think the only <laughs> the only uh, place in help.icp.com I go to recently is uh, around the application programming model uh, area. So it, Chrome remembers that very nicely for me. Make that a little bit smaller so we can see here. Um, we've got here. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? References. We've got the JavaScript API references, and we've got basically you know, a decent amount of documentation here. I mean, we're not gonna read through, we're not come on this live stream to read through documentation. Um, but I've been looking at this documentation a little bit. It's all public documentation, it's all publicly available. Um, and we're gonna have a, a little play around, okay? So I'm gonna just minimize that for a second. Um, and let's just make this full screen again. Uh, in fact, why don't instead of instead of doing that, let's let's actually start Tmux first of all. Um, I've just lost the um, where are we? Oh, there we go. Fine. Yes, we got still there. Uh, are we still there? Cool. Okay. So um, I just want to have a look on the left hand side. I want to reference to our data model. So let's just open that. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, that'll do. And in fact. Um, we also want um, the 
package because that's quite interesting. I, I, I found something out I want to share with you as well. So there's our data model. Um, there's our package. In fact, let's add it a bit more. Oops. There we go. There's our package. And let's have another um, Tmux window here uh, to do stuff with. So let's, let's open the start the REPL with CDS REPL. Um, yes, they run it. Ternary, ternary operators are one of my favorite things. They're just so pretty. Um, indeed, indeed, indeed. So yeah, I mean, there's so many gems in uh, the code uh, in the CDS um, set of uh, packages that is worth just looking at just, just for the sake of learning from other people. Um, I, I do like reading code. I don't get much time for it these days, but uh, I do like reading other people's code. Um, okay, so one of the things we saw um, just briefly in that documentation is that one of the first things you want to do really is uh, instantiate this sort of singleton, um, which is a reference not only to the uh, CDS, uh, SAP CDS package, but also a connection based upon that package. So we'll say const CDS um, equals, in fact, let's just, if I did that again, I've got it there. Now, interestingly enough, note, I'm going to control C that, note that in fact, that isn't, wasn't the same REPL history. And looking in that REPL.js, I noticed that they're using a different history file, .cds REPL history. Okay, so that is um, where your CDS REPL history is stored. Anyway, CDS REPL, uh, there we go. So I'm gonna actually uh, instantiate uh, this CDS singleton by requiring the package and calling connect. Now, um, that takes a little bit of time, takes you know a split second, which means that's good, you know, uh, it's doing something. Hopefully it has done something. Um, let's just have a look at CDS. There's a ton of stuff there. So I'm gonna use the, um, oops, uh, Tmux's lovely sort of scroll thing here to go up. It's huge, it's huge. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff um, that we can start to look at, um, but this is just a start. And, um, oh, the CDS, oh, hi, um, uh, um, the, um, sorry, Emmanuel, um, uh, the, um, uh, the CDS REPL read evaluate print loop is is a, a command line interface to the heart of CDS. Um, it's it's a way of uh, in in um, in Marius's words, it's a way of getting closer to interrogating our runtime. Um, and to be honest, in researching what the REPL is and playing around with what you can do with it, I have I have felt I've got a little bit closer to the heart of CDS. Uh, if you look through the documentation, you'll see all sorts of three letter acronyms, uh, CDS, Core Data and Services, um, CQN, uh, Core Query Language, uh, sorry, CQL, Core Query Language, CQN, Core, core Query Notation, CDL, uh, CDS Definition Language. Um, there's all sorts of three letter acronyms, all beginning with C, which are slightly confusing, or at least to my poor brain. But actually, one of the things that clicked or one, one penny that dropped when I was looking into this since last Friday, was the fact that um, CQN, Core Query Notation, is something we're gonna look into here. Um, that's effectively um, one of the few, one of the small number of central beating hearts of CDS. It's essentially a, um, an abstract uh, you know, JavaScript object canonical representation of queries, okay, um, and queries being, you know, uh, create, insert, update, delete, and so on. Uh, sort of, ab again, abstracted though. Um, in the same way that um, CSN, which we saw, I think, um, was it the first episode, or episode one, or episode two, where we compiled something, where we compiled um, a little bit of CDS definition, and we got all sorts of output, then we compiled it to SQL, then we compiled it to HANA, that first output, which was quite verbose, that is almost like the canonical representation, almost like the abs abstract syntax tree, for you language nerds out there, um, of um, uh, core data service definitions, definitions of entities and types and so on, and annotations. So um, welcome, thanks for, thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, the CDS, that's what the CDS REPL is. And I think I digressed a little bit there, but it's all good. So. Um, there we go, we've got now a handle on our connection. Now, one of the interesting things that I found was 
I was thinking, well, um, oh, no, that's not, sorry, escape key, that's not, we're not in VI mode. Um, one of the things that I found was, you know, where is it connecting to? You can also say connect DB. I've seen that in the documentation as well. And connect DB, oh, sorry, uh, oh, yeah, of course, const. Let's do that again. Connect DB, okay, does the same thing. And um, what that is, if I say DB banana, oh, let's change it to banana, okay, and move back again, didn't find a configuration. So actually the connect um, is by default looking for DB. And where is it looking for DB? In our CDS, in the CDS stanza of package.json. So we can say, for example, uh, C connect banana. Ah, of course, yeah, I'm gonna use var next time. Um, so, CDS REPL, banana, and, it's and it works, okay? So that's all cool. Uh, in fact, um, one of the really nice things, let's just do that, let's fix that again. Let's go back again and change it back to DB. Okay, so now we've got our CDS. And one of the really cool things is that what the REPL gives us, and because of the introspection nature, um, oh, you can just, yes, you can. You can. Uh, Pierre, that's a really good point, actually. Um, one, of the, one of the cool features of the no REPL itself is that it has a list of um, commands. And um, doc, I think it might be dot clear, uh, might be something that helps us there. Yeah, so that was actually from um, the documentation, the Node.js API documentation that we were led to by uh, CDS help REPL. Awesome. This is exactly the sort of interaction we want. Thank you, thank you, uh, Pierre. Perfect. Um, and t until I started looking at this, I didn't even know about this. Um, so where were we? Uh, we've got CDS, but it's got command completion. So tab, I hit tab, and we get all sorts of stuff. So CDS env, in fact, will give us all sorts of stuff. And we can see basically this comes from uh, effectively our package.json with extra bits as well, like what the mapping, what the uh, SQL mapping is, what the version of OData is, and so on. Um, so, so far, so good. We can also, however, because we're connected to the database at a CDS level, we can say cds.entities. Now, again, this is sort of in canonical form. We can actually say, um, well, why don't we say this, object.keys cds.entities, books, authors, and orders. That's really cool. So in fact, I suppose we could say cds.entities.books. In fact, let's choose the authors one because authors is a little bit smaller, isn't it? So there we go, authors. There we go, we can sort of see that on one page. So we're effectively being able to interrogate the uh, canonical definition I guess the CSN definition, maybe this is, the, this is the CSN definition, of what we've defined in our uh, data model.cds. Um, we can do more. We can say, for example, um, cds. Dot, uh, sorry, cds.entities.authors.keys. There's only one key, ID. We can also do elements and so on. So there's also, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do everything, but one of, the, one of the things I've realized is that the REPL is just a thin layer around the CDS API. And the CDS API with, uh, that, that handles the query side of things and also the definition side of things is so rich that, you know, it would take all week to sort of dig in um, and so on. So what we'll do instead is um, have a little look at other things as well. There's there's documentation again in the uh, in the help.sap.com uh, portal. There's documentation there that tells us all sorts of different things. So if we, in fact, let's have a look. Um, where are we? I think I've saved that, didn't I? Uh, there we go. Um, CDSQL. So this is the query language um, package, and it provides fluent API functions for writing queries in JavaScript. Now, um, as you can see here, it sort of looks like SQL, right? Um, and, you know, for a reason. But exactly, this, this, is, this is really, really useful to, to debug stuff and to find things out and just to generally understand a little bit more about what you've built before you actually, actually, before you, actually um, you know, start up and, and start the service. 
Um, absolutely right. And also, everything we're doing here, it turns out, of course, is useful knowledge-wise for when we are actually debugging using the debugger, which we'll have a look at um, in the second half of this uh, live stream. So when I first saw this sentence, fluent API functions, um, is that big enough, by the way? Um, fluent API functions. I was thinking, okay, fluent, that's an interesting word. Um, you know, it's just a nice word. But actually, um, fluent AP, a fluent API is a style of API, which is effectively, um, uh, this, the style is where you build up what you're trying to achieve by calling in a chain, as in fluid, flowing, different functions. The If you look at the S4 HANA uh, Cloud SDK, uh, they have a mechanism for building OData queries. And that's a fluid, oh, sorry, not fluid, that's a fluent um, uh, API as well. So here we've got select dot from, and call, that's a function call with uh, some with a parameter, with an argument, foos, dot where, and then you pass it an object with kind bar and so on. So this is, this is how you build these queries up. And of course, it's not just sort of read-only queries. It works for everything. So insert into, update, delete, and so on. So we can have a look at this stuff here. Um, maybe we'll try some inserts into shortly. Um, uh, hey, who... Ah, uh, hello, hello. Hi, Diego. Welcome for passing by uh, and, and saying hello. Thank you very much for, for calling in. Um, so, Marius, would this also work if you were executing the code in the normal REPL, or is, a spe is there a special feature to the CDS REPL? Um, I think this, as long as you, well, I'm thinking, as long as you loaded in the right magic into the normal node REPL, and I've been looking into how I might sort of have some sort of auto-executed stuff in a normal no REPL, and it looks like you can do this thing called a context object, uh, then maybe, yeah, maybe maybe you could do that. Um, so this stuff obviously is special to the CDS um, REPL only because of how they use the no REPL and start it up with extra features. Um, again, this is that's my understanding from what I've looked at. Um, I'm uh, I'm still learning this just like we all are here. Uh, and, I, and I hope this is useful, um, just sharing this, these sorts of thoughts. So um, let's have a play around with the uh, with this CDSQL package or the artifacts from this uh, CDS query language package. We can say something like uh, select, oops, well, in fact, CDSQL dot tab tab, and we can all already see you know uh, the the out the, the outcome of being able to introspect into this particular package. So let's go for select, and I, I just I just boggle at the fact that this this is this feels just such a beautiful way um, of a beautiful construction. You know the the way this has been thought out is just really really nice. I think. So what we'll do is we, all, we can also say because these are actually in the in the global as well. Select select dot okay from and then we can say now select dot from books now i'm just guessing at that there okay so that really we don't know whether that, that's going to work or not because actually all the outputs is like the canonical representation uh of the query and in the form of this so-called cqn um cds query notation the query the query equivalent of CDS definition language, C, oh, CDL, oh, sorry, CDS, uh, CDS, uh, what is it? CSN, CSN, uh, my brain's not working. It's, af it's afternoon, I'm not an afternoon person, but you know what I mean. CSN, uh, oh, core schema, core schema notation, of course, not CDS, core schema notation, the stuff we saw before. Um, so in fact, if we have a look, uh, again, this is, this is me trying to sort of make things up on the fly. Uh, yeah, CDS compile to JSON to HANA. CDS compile to HANA. Um, DB, can we do that? Oh, I, can't, I, did, I did that once, uh, CDS, oh, you are CDS load. Where, where was it? There we go. CDS um, load. Oh, CDS load, CDS load. I did see somewhere um, a way of loading something and then compiling it. Um, 
Well, I, I'm sure I made a note. Let's have a look at this here. I uh, can't find it. Where is it? JavaScript APIs. Oh, there we go. Yes, CDS load, then, okay, yeah, that's it. CDS load, some model, DB, for example, then CDS compile to SQL. So let's try CDS load DB, then CDS compile to SQL. Is that gonna work for us? There we go, yes. So that is um, uh, that is a chain of promises. Uh, well, you know, it's a chain of a single promise, I suppose, a load returns a promise. Um, so we can load the DB and compile it. Uh, and why am I doing that? Because I wanted to see uh, the uh, core schema notation. Um, what else have we got here? To uh, CDL, CD, can't see my screen. There we go, CDL. There we go, there's the core schema notation. Or CDS definition language. Anyway, uh, that was a digression. Where were we? What was the last thing I was trying to do? Uh, oh yeah, here we go, select from books. So. Select from books is now a, you know, a query that sort of is a standalone thing. We can actually feed it in to the cds.run function. So we can say, well, I'll well, just wrap it for now, um, cds run, and this actually should not work for a reason I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, cds.run. Okay, so, it try, so the, what we're trying to do here is correct but what I've done is not quite right. So um, SQLite error, no such table books, because I guess the table is called in in uh, in my in SQLite, my.bookshop from, oops, from the uh, namespace, uh, bookshop, is it bookshop books? There we go, amazing. Um, so we can actually run that uh, and run a query language, query, query language based query on our database. I'm just, I don't know about you, but I'm just like, wow, this is so, so powerful. And it helps me understand what's going on underneath, which of course is always a good thing. Now, the really interesting thing is that, you know, I needed to know uh, and have a look at the um, CDS definition there to know that, oh yeah, okay, when that gets translated, uh, it's my.bookshop.books. But actually, we've still got this books, um, cds.entities.books thing here. Um, and why don't I say b equals cds.entities, if I could type, dot books. Okay, so we got b there. So I could see now, select from, not a literal string in this sense, but b. Because that is the representation of the books entity set. It's just, this needs definitely exploring a little bit more, but that really sort of blew my mind a little bit. Um, we can also, of course, insert um, and you know, update and delete and everything. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of uh, wonderful things. So we, you know, book dot, um, where are we? Where, where was it? Uh, name, my book dot name, my book, yeah, book. Book dot name is my bookshop dot books. Um, shall we try? Is it worth trying a an insert? Um, now, I'm just thinking, yes, why don't we try an insert? And let's look at the documentation. Uh, where's my browser? Is it that one? No, it's not that one. Where is it? Um, did, I, did I get rid of it? Oh, just, uh, oh there it is, there. Um, so CDS QL and insert into. Yes, here we go, insert into. Again, this is this fluent thing. Um, let's, I'm gonna put that over there so, for a second so I can read it while I'm typing. Um, and I'm gonna go back here and say, um, let's, let's add, a, let's add uh, an author. Let's add, so we can add a book as well maybe, but let's add Douglas Adams, okay? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy author. Um, so what do we wanna do? Why don't we start building up this um, core query notation object for this insert intention. I guess you could sort of describe it like that. Um, so Langland, thanks for all the fish. You're, you're not going already, are you? But uh, thank you. No, nice quote there. Nice quote. Um, I hope you've got your peril sensitive sunglasses on because this is a little bit, like, woo, don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, so why don't we say here, for example, um, uh, add DNA. That looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Anyway, let's put an underscore so we can read it. DNA Douglas Noel Adams. Add DNA equals 
uh, insert dot into um, and we're going to say, I don't think I, let's just do that over there. I don't think I uh, grabbed the author's entity object. So we have to say uh, cds.entity. We can still say cds authors. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Well, in fact, let's go back and let's not assign it to a, a variable yet. Let's just see what happens. Nice. Okay. So um, columns, uh, is it columns insert into cds entity uh, dot Oh, actually, yeah, we, we should assign it. Um, add DNA equals that. Add DNA dot. There we go. Um, columns. Columns. And we've got the ID column and the name column. We're not going to make any, we have, you know, we're not going to add any books yet. Uh, so I'll say columns ID and name. That's nice. Um, and we're going to say um, values. Is it values we want? Uh, yes, values. Now, what number shall we have? What ID shall we have for Douglas Adams? Somebody tell me. I've got my own idea of what we should have as an ID, but there we go. Uh, and, and let's call it, let's add the, add the title, Douglas Adams. Anybody, anybody for the, an ID, a numeric ID for Douglas Adams? Thank you very much, Marius. I was getting desperate there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, folks. 42. This wasn't planned, by the way, but, uh, you know, what? 43. What do you mean, 43? Oh, yeah, I was 43. In... Here's a story. Um, uh, when I was an SAP mentor, you know, I was asked, you know, what number do you want? I said, I was like, 42, please. Oh, it's already gone. Oh, okay, I'll have 43. What, what an idiot. What an idiot I was. Like, that doesn't mean anything. Um, uh, well, I don't like that ID, uh, Vitaly. Anyway, so 42. Okay, so we've got this sort of this insert intent. Um, so why don't we do that? So let's do a CDS run around. In fact, we've got the add DNA. Oh, actually, um, add DNA. So we, with this Fluent API, we've been building up. So actually now add DNA is all of that. Hmm. Uh, nice uh, chin pose in there, Lars. Um, so let's run it. CDS.run add DNA. Now, isn't that nice? I'm hoping that's worked. I'm guessing that is like the return of the number of rows affected. Um, yeah. I th oh, actually, I think that is Vitaly's password. Yes, yeah, so don't use it. Vitaly, change it quickly. Um, uh, uh, yeah, no. Yes, I, it was uh, 43 for me. Um, so we've inserted. And I just do love this little arrow as well. I just It's just so 1970s. Perfect. And the, the wonderful thing is, what, what I like is, I want to run all this at some stage on one of my old dumb terminals, one of, from my collection. Ideally a VT100, but I don't, I don't have one of those physically. Um, so now, why don't we do this? Um, where is it? I'll just scroll up there. Uh, did I see us? Uh, oh, no, it was books, wasn't it? Select from uh, cds.entities.authors. There we go, it's there. Um, so I think that's really nice. Um, I'm hoping as well, if we um, come out of here um, and say CDS, oh, uh, reset. It says, I'm having problems with this sort of, um, uh, the bash shell when it comes out of something that sort of stops the TTY. But anyway, um, CDS run. Let's just um, bring that here. Authors. And there he is. Um, I, I just I just think that's amazing. Um, God, I can't believe the time. Okay, so it's 15.39. Um, so we've got 20 minutes left. So why don't we move across? Shall we move across to uh, the debugging? Um, yes, I think we shall. So we've got that. Um, I've got... Um, let me... Oh yeah, let me kill that. And... Um, Let's open VS Code. Uh, let's just clear that. And we've got here, um, in fact, oh, no, what we want, I've got another thing set up for, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, it's a slightly different version of the bookshop for reasons I'll go into maybe a bit later, um, but I can share the, the settings anyway from this. Um, it's got some extra bits I wanted to show you. 
so here is uh, the bookshop and you should recognize most of this anyway. There's a data model. It's got a few more fields. That's not the reason I've got it here. Um, and um, it's got this admin service defined as well. Um, sorry, here. And uh, there's this things I want to sort of start looking into um, on Friday and a week on Friday. So I've sort of brought this on board um, to show bits and pieces as well. Uh, draft enablement is also a little bit of uh, stuff to do with multiple services. Um, but anyway, I digress. One of the really cool things is that um, VS Code itself has uh, a whole sort of substructure for debugging. You know, as you can see, there's a debug console here. And this particular um, project, this particular bookshop project, has a .VS Code folder directory, which all, all the ones we've, we've done so far have a VS Code folder. It just so happens that this one has this launch.json, which includes some debugging goodness. Um, this, actually, this, actually, this debugging um, configuration is not CDS specific, it's not SAP specific, it's VS Code specific. It's just that, of course, it's been configured to use the CDS run and various options, environmental variables to, to be set so CDS recognizes those and does the right thing. Um, and you can actually access this, let's close this, you can access this, uh, through this open configurations option. That opens directly the launch.json or creates one um, if you don't have one already. Um, the data model, why is that changed? What's going on here? Um, ah, yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. Uh, what I haven't done, let's close that for a second. What I haven't done is I just, I cloned this repo from somewhere else, uh, but we haven't. what we haven't got is any, um, any uh, uh, node modules installed yet. So in fact, if you look at the um, package.json, this one has got some really nice, uh, yes, just like with the mobile dev kit, this, this has got some really nice little scripts here, which I think maybe uh, you know, the folks in the CDS team are uh, starting to standardize on. By the way, on Friday, just after, just after we saw Christian on the live stream, he did push that big red button and um, CDS version, CDS version 3.5.0 is now out. Uh, that was out on Friday. Uh, I've been looking through the, the release notes. Maybe we'll go through a, like a, a delta of that to have a look what's different. Um, yeah, VS Code is a really, really cool uh, ID. And yes, I, I run it in with the VI, um, uh, with our VI key bindings as well, Vim key bindings. Kids debugging Python, awesome, awesome. That's really cool. Um, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got kids doing um, JavaScript at the moment, but uh, Python is also really cool. So um, why are we looking at this? Because, oh yes, so I don't have any um, node module directory yet, which obviously implies that I haven't done uh, the setup. So in fact, if we say uh, npm run, what npm will do is say, well, actually it looks in the package and says, hmm, okay, well, you've got this sort of lifecycle script, CDS run, uh, which is the start, but also via npm run script. This is a slight two-level thing here with CDS run, um, which I've never properly understood, but anyway. Um, from the package.json, if I say CDS run setup, huh, what? Oh, sorry, not CDS run setup, npm run setup. What a fool. npm run setup, got CDS on the brain. Uh, it should install all the things, install all the things, e.g. Uh, SAP CDS and all the bits and pieces related to that. And it will also then, if successful, ampersand, ampersand, um, deploy uh, to the SQLite bookshop, just like we've done already on the, in the previous episodes. Okay, so that's done. Um, so now let's, uh, let's have a quick look um, at this. Let's ca sorry, let's carry on looking at this. There we go. Um, so now what we want um, is to have a look at, for example, uh, a bit of JavaScript, because obviously what we want to debug is some JavaScript. Um, by the way, are we still okay? Um, I've seen we've got more followers now. Uh, sorry, more viewers now. We've got uh, a nice number for a Saturday, after, uh, Saturday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon. God, my brain is so rubbish in the afternoon. I've no idea. I start at 5 a.m. and, you know, so... That's my excuse. Um, so here we go. We've got the, uh, in the server folder, we've got the cat service 
CDS file, which is one we sort of should recognize. It's uh, slightly different, but uh, and we've also got the admin service one, which was briefly looked at before as well. Um, and again, one of these really nice things with CDS uh, and um, CAP rather with, uh, with how it goes about things is that with convention over configuration, if you create um, a, a file called catservice.js, it will use that um, to extend the, uh, the, the, the built-in out of the box uh, CRUD plus Q um, serving mechanisms with what you want as well. Notice that this particular version of the bookshop project doesn't have the JS files in the same directory as the CDS files. It's got them in this handlers directory. Um, I only noticed that this morning. I need to look into whether that again is convention or whether there's something that I've missed that's been specified. Look in the handlers directory for the implementations. Anyway, here's the um, cat service.js. And we've seen this. If we look at the um, bookshop no, where are we? Node.js. There we go. If we look at our tutorial that we'll continue with on Friday, we will see down here somewhere. Uh, there we go. Something very similar. Okay, so we've got a an extra handler um, here relating to orders, and we've got an extra handler here relating to books. So let's close that and have a look at those a little bit more closely. Um, here, so um, we've got a, and in fact, this is this is also documented again in the same place in the help.sap.com um, help portal. Uh, effectively, there's a series of handlers that each incoming query is passed through, just like the, for example, I was related to the Apache HTTPD uh, design, and also it's it, it works. Um, Yes, I, I definitely want to share this, uh, Pierre. Um, so yeah, watch this space. Um, um, it also works in the same way that the Internet Communication Manager works on the ABAP stack. How amazing is that? But basically, I think that design was taken from the Apache uh, HTTPD design, which is a series of handlers that a request will sort of run the gauntlet through and maybe get thrown out at a certain stage if that, hand, if that particular handler um, sort of deemed itself to have handled the request. So there's the default generic handlers, and you can override those um, with an on, um, or you can, you know, you can pre-work pre, pre uh, work on the handlers. Oh, what's that little noise there? Crawling5, thank you for following. Thank, welcome. Um, uh, and you can also sort of attach another handler to, to run um, straight after the, the generic handler has been executed. So here, for example, we've got a, a before, a dot before, where we want to, for example, check something. This is on before of a create operation or a create query, let's say, a create operation on the orders uh, entity set, where, for example, uh, we see, well, what's the, what's the, look, let's look at the order and let's look at the data in the order. Um, sorry, let's look at the data in the request and let's look at, that's the order, let's look at the order amount and, you know, make some modification to the books only if that only if there's stock okay in a similar way we've got here a um an after handler an extra handler where we're reading books now um really interestingly uh this is a of course this is this again this is a modern javascript and everything and so we've got this served or after which is a function and you pass it of course um the operation and then optionally, looking at the documentation, optionally the um, entity, entity uh, definition or the entity type, let's say. And we had this, this debate on Twitter, didn't we? About, uh, thanks Vitaly, thanks for joining. Um, we had this debate on Twitter the other day about, I think it was Al Templeton uh, started it off with a question about why are these things uh, in the plural, or more specifically, why are these things in the plural and uppercased? Now there's some naming conventions that are from the best practices. Let me go back to, um, where are we? Here we go, ah, oh, here's the documentation. Let me go back to the documentation. There's some best practices here um, that talk about, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, using our naming conventions that talk about this. So um, 
Yes, distinguish entities from types. For entities, use the plural form and, of course, um, start entity and type names with a capital letter. So basically, where you see a capital lettered uh, entity name that's plural, that's an entity type. Um, where you see a capital lettered entity or capital lettered thing that's in the singular, that's a type. Ooh, who's that? Skycrowd, thank you for following. Amazing. Um, and welcome. Uh, so there we go. How are we doing for time? I think we're okay. Um, this is this just feels slightly um, crazy, uh, but I think I hope it's okay. Let me know in the comments uh, whether this is useful. Um, I'm sort of you know drifting a little bit, um, but I'm still exploring this with you. Any you know any any direction would be uh, more than welcome. Just, just let me know what you want want us to do in the last sort of ten minutes. But we'll get to um, okay. Thanks, Christian. Um, you'll see that I'm just about to do the debugging and set a break point and everything. So you'll see that in the uh, in the recording. Um, so anyway, that was that, and what we're looking at here is the. Uh, the serve dot after and the serve dot before. So if we look at the documentation here, we need to go to um, service providers. Oh, uh, there we go. Service providers, implementations, and methods. So you can get the documentation for how this all works here. So service on, service before, service after, and service reject. So service after. Let's look at this simple case here where we've got um, service after read books each. Let's make that sort of across here a little bit. There we go, that's, um, uh, actually that's okay. Service after event, read, entity, optional, books, and handler. And of course, this is a an ES6 fat arrow definition of a function. Okay, we all saw that in episode zero. Um, and the way this handler as a function has been defined, it's been defined to take a single um, a single um, <coughs> parameter each. Now that is, uh, according to the documentation, a special case. Name the parameter each as a convenient shortcut for a per row handler. So why don't we do that? Uh, in fact, uh, first of all, why don't we um, say console.log um, each. Let's run that. And let's run it in debug mode. I'm going to hit F5, which is debug, basically. Start debugging, okay? And we get a wonderful connection to the uh, the Node.js uh, debugger. And we just scroll up here, make it a little bit bigger. Where are we? There we go. Um, click on that. And we get... Oops. Where are we? Sorry. Whoop. There we go, there's the uh, what we want. This is again a little bit different to the bookshop thing before. We get the books, okay? So that's normal, we've seen that already. And we can see the console log. And every time we get a little uh, book output. In fact, why don't I say here, um, uh, where is it? Da, 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 console log. So we've got, so we can see it's called each time. Okay, so that's, Kill that and run it again. And let's request that again. There we go. So there's one arrow, two arrows, three arrows. So this is being called each time. Now, if we say, for example, um, breakpoint, let's put a breakpoint in there, run that again. Now we end on the breakpoint. And the world is then your lobster. And everything we've learned so far in, um, I'll just make that a little bit bigger there, a bit bigger, yeah. Everything we've learned so far in the REPL applies equally to here. So let's just have, just avail ourselves of the context of where we're working. There we go. Let's, let's have a look at each. So we can see that each is, in, is, is as it says, the individual entry each time round, okay? Um, so we can say, for example, each dot title equals banana. And then I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna hit F5 to continue, okay? That is the sort of the um, key uh, con uh, key for continue. But of course, this I think it's five books, so I hit it five times, for example. I could take, that, take the breakpoint off, actually. Hit it five times, and we get, hopefully, um, yeah, the title 
Cheers, John. We get the title, Banana, um, which, is, which is great. So why don't we change that to um, a more standard or a, you know, something that doesn't use this convenience method, and we can supply this sort of secondary parameter, requ request, to get hold of the inbound request as well. So we'll, we'll do this. Um, we'll say here, um, uh, books. Well, we know it's books, so let's call it books request. There we go, let's save that and put a breakpoint there. I'm gonna kill that and start again. There we go, that's fine. Let's re-request that. Now this time, let's go to the um, debug console. This time, we get access to all of the uh, all of the entries that have been retrieved by the generic handler already, okay? So not just a single book each time around, and this will only be called once, by the way. So we can say, for example, books.map uh, to get the title. There we go, there's all the titles of all the books. Um, but we can also have a look at the request. So we have the request.data. Uh, but there's nothing in the, there's, there's, there was no data passed in the request because this is a read request. So this would be the equivalent, I'm guessing, of the um, of the payload in the incoming HTTP uh, request. Um, but there's, there's, there's all sorts of things you can do here. You can sort of imagine uh, exploring the incoming request of a uh, of a, an insert, for example, maybe we'll do that on Friday. Maybe we'll do that and insert some because I think in the tutorial um, we used Postman to insert um, some more books. Oh no, so insert some orders, don't we? Um, so yeah, I, I think we should leave that because there's only there's only three minutes left. Um, I think we covered some of what I wanted to cover, it's only an hour. Again, I want to keep it to an hour each time, whether it's on Fridays or midweek. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff here. I've gone through a ton of stuff, but what I wanted to do was to make sure that the stuff that I showed you, the stuff that I've been exploring as well, again, this is, I don't know this stuff. I'm just like exploring it just like you are. Um, everything is in the documentation. So it, there's nothing that sort of I found out internally only. Um, uh, you know, it's it's all it's all out there for you to read up on and play with. So you know, break out the CDS REPL on your uh, terminal and have a go. Uh, I'll share the information about the um, where are we? Let's just kill this for a second. Uh, share the information about the the launch.json configuration for debugging. That has changed. One of the reasons why I'm using this is because I want to show some really cool stuff uh, next time or the time after. But the other reason also is because the configuration for the debugging has changed slightly, it seems, between 3.0.0 and 3.5.0. Uh, so I wanted, wanted to make sure it worked for this thing here as well. So that's a bonus. Um, so we've got a I've got a question from, um, where are we? A question from Manuel here. Have you already done something that uses the express part and connect to CDS? Um, not express, well, Yes, we are in that we're using Express, as in the, the NPM package Express, the Node package Express. Um, in that, Express is the thing that CDS uses to serve all this default stuff. You know, So all the stuff that we saw, um, where is it? Um, is it? Oh, I've killed it. But all the stuff we, we saw uh, or we see when we go and you know, look at the OData service, for example, and, and the, actual, uh, the list of service definitions and, and so on, that's all served by Express. And in fact, if we go to the um, shell and say npm uh, list and not global this time, I'm pretty sure, so there we go, yes. Um, in fact, we can do a depth zero, can't we? Um, oh, that was awful. What? I'm, I'm still in sort of Emacs mode because of the REPL. Let me just do that properly, like a proper Vimmer. What happens when you install um, uh, CDS is that you also get Express installed as well. Um, and if you dig into the documentation a little bit more, uh, you'll find that basically the handlers, the generic handlers are Express handlers. 
Uh, and so, you know, it's not that the, the, the cap folks are inventing anything new. They're sort of building on, on the shoulders of giants and other open source modules and everything, just like it should be. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Yes, uh, PA, uh, thanks for pointing that out. You, you can watch past streams. Just go to um, twitch.tv qmacro99 slash videos or just click the link videos and you can see all the past streams and everything. Um, I do intend at some stage when I get time to annotate those videos um, with sort of this happens at this time, point in time, at this point in time, this happens, we talk about this then and so on. Anyway, it's four o'clock, my time. Um, that's the hour gone. Uh, I'm super happy that uh, you joined. I really, really appreciate the uh, the interaction and the chat and everything. Um, uh, yeah, I, what more can I say? Um, let me know on Twitter, because I, I closed that uh, feedback thing. Uh, let me know on Twitter what you think of what we covered, but also more importantly, whether you found this sort of extracurricular midweek stream useful. Um, I would love to know because all feedback, you know, DJ, DJ, you're an idiot. No, it's no good. Or yeah, it's fine or whatever. It is, you know, super, more than welcome. So thank you very much. I'm going to close the stream now. Thank you for joining and uh, well, see you on Friday.